And one of the other things about the new GT500 supercharger that is probably little known by the average consumer, underneath this cool looking snake emblem, there's actually an acoustical panel, aka Dynamat, to help silence certain annoying supercharger noises. Hey everybody, I'm Justin with VMP Performance and in front of me is a 2020 Shelby GT500 supercharger. This is an entirely new supercharger designed for Ford. They've never done anything like this before on a production vehicle. So we just wanted to show you what was going on inside and how it works. So from the outside, you can see there are some pretty big differences in the supercharger system. The throttle body is on the front. It is a front feed as it's often called. It's got a bypass valve. It's got tubes for water to flow in and out of the intercooler system. Uh, most often the fuel rails are bolted to the supercharger assembly because the fuel injectors are here, the ports are here, the cylinder heads are under here. So there's a lot of things that have to be there and they are here on this 2020 Shelby GT500 supercharger. But there are some nuances in how Ford did things. So one thing that's very interesting about the new 5.2 liter Predator is that it is port injection only. In 2018, the Mustang GT got PI and DI. It has both port and direct injectors. The Predator only has port injectors. The good thing is they are really big. They are fed by this fuel rail right here that is pretty massive. And that is not a bad thing to have plenty of fuel. So one of the things that I find really unique about a Coyote is the bolts that hold the fuel rails down are always extremely long. And I would say this is important because you can pretty much only get these from a Ford dealer. They are 150 millimeters long. The old naturally aspirated Coyotes had 100 millimeter long bolts. Uh, the Predator has 150 just because of the height of this fuel rail. And they used a 60 millimeter, what we call a tall style injector. It does have alignment clips. This 45 degree angle or so is intentional. Now I've got the entire fuel rail out. So this is something that is new for Ford and this is why it's called a blow up style supercharger. The rotors actually sit in the valley of the engine. They're fed from this inlet up here. The air comes in, gets compressed, blows out in the back and this lid is actually shaped to help funnel the air down into the runners and into the cylinder heads and that is how you get that oh so magical boost in your engine that makes all kinds of horsepower. There's a couple other things that are unique to this setup for uh, Ford aficionados like myself. There's a map sensor. Yes, the 2020 GT500 is actually speed density and they've got a map sensor on the back to read boost after the intercooler and then they have another map sensor up front between the throttle body and the supercharger to read inlet vacuum and that performs a very important function. It tells the computer if the bypass valve is not working properly and it will actually throw a fail safe. It'll throw check engine light codes. It will shut the whole car down over a bypass valve and that's because if this bypass valve does not work properly, you run the risk of locking up the entire supercharger. So we just plop the supercharger down on the scale and it weighs about 89 and a half pounds, almost 90 pounds fully dressed with the throttle body, the pulley. There's no water in it, so we don't have that adding any weight. Um, it kind of is what it is. I'm going to pull this off while we're still on the scales and see how much this is adding to the total weight of the blower. So now that we got the lid off of the supercharger, you can see that intercooler core that I was talking about earlier. It takes up almost the entire volume underneath that lid and it has these tubes here that flow water, these fins that flow air, and that is how the compressed air coming out of the supercharger gets cooled off before it goes into the engine. I'm going to take some quick measurements on this core just to give you an idea of how big it is. So it's around 140 millimeters wide. I'm going to have to estimate how long it is. It's around 350, 340 millimeters long and it is about 75 millimeters tall.
As you can see, the core is pretty much the same, front and back, top and bottom. When you look at these two fittings right here, there's actually a divider right through the center here. So it is a dual pass on the water side. Water flow through this core is actually very, very specific. The coolest water needs to come in through the last pass that air makes. So you bring the cold water in here, goes through, wraps around, and then the hot water comes out through the bottom. And as it's coming out through the bottom, it picks up the hottest air that uh, has just come out of the supercharger. So positive displacement superchargers live and die by the bypass valve. And the new Shelby GT500 has a huge bypass valve. This helps with everything from fuel economy to temperatures to durability. They wanna make sure that when you let off the throttle, all that boost that's in the system can vent through this bypass valve back to the inlet of the supercharger. This design is really, really nice. They have a bunch of volume between the intercooler core and the rotors to help the air distribute evenly through the whole core. These rotors have an abradable coating on them. It is actually a black powder coat. It is meant to wear in as the supercharger runs. The reason it is on there to, is to create the tightest seal possible to the rotors and to the case. By the way, did I mention these are 2.65 liter TVS rotors? Eaton Corporation makes the rotors that go in this supercharger. These are the same rotors that VMP and Magnuson use in the line of Gen 3R superchargers and the new Odin supercharger. They all use the same rotors. What is drastically different between different supercharger kits is how they employ those rotors to move air in, move air out, how they cool it and how they get it into the engine. And if you go back and look at the Gen 3R assembly video, you can see quite a bit as to how that supercharger system works. So this is a new 92 millimeter throttle body design. This is the first time Ford's ever used this on a production vehicle. It's a big single blade, like I was saying earlier. It feeds this massive inlet. At first it looks really, really big, but it actually necks down pretty quick. When you look in here, it starts out like this. It feeds those two rotors, but there is so much room in there for improvement. Another really unique aspect of this 2020 Shelby GT500 supercharger is the clutch. This huge pulley assembly actually contains a one-way clutch inside of it. And that is to basically help smooth out the supercharger at idle and on gear changes. It allows the supercharger to freewheel and that basically improves idle quality in terms of noise. At idle, when there's a lot of RPM fluctuations, the supercharger rotors can actually knock against each other and make noise. That clutch helps prevent that. Conversely, when you're wide open throttle and that DCT is making quick gear changes, the supercharger can freewheel when the engine speed drops so abruptly, and that just helps reduce heat and some other loads on the supercharger. One common misconception I've heard out there is that this clutch is necessary for durability. These 2.65 liter Eaton TVS rotors are extremely durable. They don't need the clutch. We don't use them on our superchargers designs, but this new blower does have one for the reasons that I mentioned. From the lid to the intercooler to the strange looking clutched pulley, we will be looking at every aspect of the new 2020 Shelby GT500 supercharger. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. We will see you next time.